Hello everyone, this is Salar and you are watching Smart Code. In this tutorial, I will show you how to roll a dice using JavaScript. And this is a web application, so we need some CSS and HTML also. It's a simple application with only three components, a heading, an image, and a button. And every time you click on the button, a dice is rolled, right? There are so many interesting programs or games where you actually need to roll a dice. And this application will give you basic idea of dice rolling in JavaScript. The development won't take more than five minutes. So let's start coding this application. Right, so in the VS Code, JS is my working directory and inside my working directory, I have index.html and another folder which is img. And inside the img folder, I have all the images that I'm gonna use in this tutorial. I have a cover image and all the dice images from dice 1 to dice 6. Now take a look at the image's name. The first string in all the images are same, which is dice. And then I have numbered my dices from 1 to 6. So you will also name your images like that so that you can easily fetch them in the program using JavaScript. So we will start with the HTML and give our page a structure. I'm going to wrap everything inside our wrapper and we can call it div wrapper. And inside the wrapper, I'm going to take three more containers, one for heading, one for dice image, and one for button. In the first container, we will write heading. Like this. And in the second container, we will put image. So I'm taking an image tag. And initially, we will use cover image, right? And we need to give this image tag an ID so that we can access it from the JavaScript. Let's say the ID is dice image, right? And finally, we will code a button. And this button also needs an ID because it will call JavaScript code. We can call it roll button. So now we have our HTML ready and if you look in the browser, it will look something like as we see on the screen. Now we are going to apply some CSS to improve the look of this page. Now drop a CSS file. You can name it style.css. So this is our CSS file. We first need to link this file to the HTML document. So now our file is linked to the HTML document. And now we are going to write the styles for the CSS. I will start with adding Google font API into my CSS file. As you can see, the font I am using is stylish and cartoonish, and it's actually a Google font. And the name of this font is FreeJal. So here in the Google font website, I will search for FreeJal. And here we have, I will select this one. And then I will click on the select this style and here I just need to copy the import directive. And I will paste the directive at the top of my CSS file. Right, so the font is added to a file that we will be using in our program. I have a complete tutorial on how to work and add Google Fonts APIs. You can watch the tutorial on my channel, right? Our first selector, as usual, will be universal selector. And inside this selector, I will set box sizing to border box and reset padding and margin. And we'll set font family to free job. Right? And now I will target the container. I will give it a size and a background color. Right, and this is how it looks at the moment. And you will also notice the font is inherited by all the other tags. Now I'm gonna shift this whole container to the center of the page. And what you see here is a margin to this container. And we just need to write a property margin zero auto. And this property is gonna divide this margin equally to the right and to the left. So I will give margin zero auto to my container. And you will see the result if you refresh the page. So now our container is center aligned. 
but the items in the containers are not center aligned, right? So we are going to fix it. But first, we need to adjust the size of this image. Now look at the HTML. Our image is inside a div container, right? So what I will do here is I will give a fixed size to this container and we'll let the image adjust its size according to the size of the container. This is more flexible way to put images on the web. Let's say if you have images of different sizes, then they will always fit themselves in the container. So in the CSS, I will target image container and give it a size. Let's say 400 pixels into 400. Right? And now I will target the image tag and we'll write width 100% and height 100%. Now our dice image will fit itself inside the container, right? You can see the change when you refresh the page, right? So now I'm going to align components to the center of this container. And the easiest way to do that is use Flexbox. So I will apply Flex to the container and align these three items to the center of the container. So this is our container. We will first apply Flex and then we will set Flex direction to column. And finally, we will say align items to center, right? Let's now check the result in the browser. And there you see our items are center aligned. And now you see we have empty space here. So we can apply flex property, justify content space between. Using a space between, you can have first and second component to the edges and image to the center. So let's apply justify content space between. So here you just need to write justify content space between. Right? And now here we see the result. That's it. Now, one final thing is just increase the font size here and here. So let's target the heading first. And change the font size to 4EM. And now I will target the button and set the font size to 2EM. Right? So this is our final interface, okay? Now we don't need to write more CSS. I'm closing CSS file and I'm going to drop in another file for JavaScript. Let's say the file name is rolldice.js, right? And here we have our JavaScript file. And we will write JavaScript code in this file. Now before we write code in this file, we just need to call this file in the HTML and we will call it here. The name of the file is rolldice.js, right? So we are calling JavaScript at the end of the container. And this is because of we want JavaScript to come into the action when HTML is fully loaded and rendered, right? Now in the JavaScript, we will first assign a click event to this button. And every time you click on this button, it will call JavaScript code. So for adding click event to the button, I will write some code and then I will describe it. So what you see here is JavaScript code and this code is magical. So this magical line actually has two different parts. This is part one and this is part two. In the first part, we are using get element by ID function of document object and we are passing button ID to it, right? So the first part is going to fetch this button into the JavaScript file. And now we have another part which is add event listener. So what does add event listener do? It is gonna attach a click event to this button. That means whenever you make a click on the button, it will be listened by this function. Now check on the second argument. This argument is the name of the user defined function. So it's the name of the function. So it's a function that we are gonna write in our program. So let's first write the definition of this function.
So now you may have better understanding of this line of code. Whenever you perform click on this button, this function is called and here is the definition of this function. So let's first check out if the click operation on the button and the calling of the function is working or not. I'm going to code an alert message in the function and would say everything is fine. Right? Now I need to refresh the page and then I will click on the button and here you see the alert message. Everything is fine. And that simply means JavaScript is listening to the click event and calling the function game start. Right? So we are going to program in this function. Now for rolling dice, we need random values from 1 to 6. And I will code another function to generate random values. So let's code it. This is the name of the function. And whenever we call it, it will return a random integer value in the range of 1 to 6, right? So this function is going to return a random integer between 1 to 6. So let's make a call in the game start function to see if we are getting the right result or not. We can log the variable to check the output. So we need to open cancel tab in the dev tool to check the output. And here you see, every time I click on the button, a random integer is returned to me in the range of one to six, right? So it's working. Right, so game start function is called when you perform a click. And inside the game start function, we are calling another function, which is get random numbers. And this function returns a random number that we are saving in this variable. So we have a random number in the program. What we don't have is this image tag. So we need this image tag in the JavaScript so that we can place dice images based on the random numbers. So we will get this tag in the JavaScript using a function get element by ID and we will use this ID. So in the JavaScript, I will write Now we have random numbers and image tag in the program and it's now time to manipulate src attribute of image tag and put different dice images accordingly. And here I just need to write a single line of code and our program is done. That's it. Now you have a rolling dice application. So what I am actually doing here, I am assigning a dice image to the image tag based on the random numbers. Let's say if number four is returned by this function, so this whole string becomes dice4.png and dice4.png is actually this image. So this image will be inserted into the image tag right and if you know how to work with template strings in javascript then you can also write code like right so both are exactly the same let's now give our program a final run and see if it's working or not and here you see our application is working perfectly fine. So this is the end of the tutorial and I hope you like this tutorial. I will see you around and thanks for watching.